Hello YouTube and welcome to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be packing uh, my art supplies for a weekend getaway and also showing you what's in my everyday plain air painting kit. So if this is something that interests you, please stay tuned and I will get started straight away. Okay, well, I hope you all are having a fabulous time because as you're watching this video, I will be having a fabulous time with my little vacation getaway to New Mexico. And um, today I want to pack my little bag for my vacation getaway. And in doing so, I'm gonna unpack it and show you what I normally keep in my plein air painting kit. Um, I've done uh, quite a bit of plein air painting these past couple of years. And a couple of months ago, I uh, did an art haul because I decided to invest in my plein air painting kit and uh, hopefully make it a more successful one for me. And it has been, it's been working really, really well. And I posted a video reviewing the Holbein Iridori uh, Autumn Gouache set and Miranda Watson from Alkali Creek Art, I'll link her channel down below, uh, made a comment on my channel and asked me about, or on the video rather, and asked about the gouache that I keep in my portable painter and how it holds up and how I keep it. So um, before I unpack everything, I do want to show you how I keep my kit. So in um, in my kit, I've got the portable painter. Um, this is my plein air painting kit. I'll zip it up and show you first how I carry it around. I got this case off Amazon. It's like an expandable pencil case and it's canvas. And everything that I use for my plein air painting is here with the exception of a water bottle. And um, I carry this around, this is my purse. I live in Portland. This is my very expensive, <laughs> vintage, rare, handmade, um, authentic, Goodwill find. And in my purse, I keep, of course, you know, reusable straws because I love the earth. And I keep um, a water bottle that I refill with just a little bit of water. This is my paint water bottle. So yeah, and um, this is like my actual purse. So when I leave the house and wanna go out, this is my painting kit, which just fits in my purse just like so. And for me, this is my to-go kit. So this is my bag. You can kind of see how my painting kit fits in there. And you know, I toss it around. I don't necessarily work hard to keep it upright. Miranda Watson asked if my gouache gets tossed around um, in my bag, if it like it spills. And I haven't had that experience. So now I'll open it up and show you. So this holds a lot, it expands like that. And here I've got my portable painter. I've got my sketchbook. I keep um, some titanium white wash. I keep two clips, which I honestly have never used, but I feel like if I take them out, then I'm gonna want them. So there those are. Then I keep this in here instead of a pencil sharpener because it's, yeah, for a couple reasons. Then I have this little portable brush thing. Inside it, I have two inexpensive ones from Amazon. This, de, 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 yeah, I'm not going to try. Um, but they're decent. They're like little quill brushes. Um, just kind of inexpensive watercolor brush set. But they work, they work well. And it has a little hole at the end. So those I use, and then in here I also have my Escoda Perla brush, which I absolutely love. Um, I, I don't use that for um, the, the gouache. I use these for the gouache. My, the gouache is in my portable painter. So I have these, these are my portable, my brushes. And then I also keep in here my watercolors 
And if you saw my haul from a couple months ago when I got my portable painter and this watercolor sketchbook, I also got this set of Holbein uh, watercolor palm box. And I know in the haul, I haven't, I haven't done the full review of this set yet, but in the haul, I had said, you know, it's an expensive box of watercolors. This is the Holbein watercolor palm box. It's got um, 36 of their pans. Each pan is magnetic and it has the information on the side of it printed. It comes with a magnet on the bottom and then it's got a magnetic strip in the bottom as well. So um, the pans don't fall out. They stay in there, they don't jiggle around. Um, and then it has the palette, the palette and I covered the swatch card here are the colors if you'd like to see. And I covered the swatch card with um, just like packing tape. And um, in in my haul, I had said, oh, there's no way I'm going to take this out. But after giving it more thought, because it is an expensive box, I paid like $160 for it. Sorry. Um, but after giving it thought, I thought, yeah, no, I'm going to take this out and use the heck out of it and get my money's worth. And I'm so glad I did. This is a really, really, really nice um, paint kit. Um, I'm really happy that I have it. I mean, there are other really expensive paint kits on the market for plain air, like, you know, the whiskey painters box, or they have that that brass box that's really expensive so i mean this one is expensive it's like 160 170 dollars on amazon and it's more expensive of course on jackson's or what have you but i'm super super happy that i have it and it does come with this palette that's removable you can attach it on the side and you can also even put like a piece of paper here and paint that way um so these are the watercolors that i keep in my plain air kit and uh, it's a plastic box it's called the, the Holbein watercolor palm box so there's that <clears throat> okay so um the portable painter uh I filled with uh some of the Holbein Iridori autumn gouache set and um, we'll see how well it has held up being tossed around. Um, like I said, Miranda Watson was curious about that. And um, you can see it really hasn't. It doesn't. When I first filled this, I let it sit out for about 24 hours before I, um, before I used it. And it was... It, it was fine. It's been fine since. Now, I will caution you. So I did not fill this to the brim. And I also deliberately did not want to fully dry my gouache out. This is an autumn set. I have had it for a little over a month. I paint with it about once a week. And in a few weeks, I fully intend on cleaning this out, washing this out. I know from experience, I live in the Pacific Northwest, I live in Portland, and I know from experience, yes, it will get moldy. You know, if you just leave wet gouache sitting in a container, it's going to grow mold. Like anything wet and moldy, especially in my climate here in, in uh, Portland, certainly will. And definitely in the fall uh, during the rainy season right now. So uh, I just want to make that clear like when you know I filled my pans I didn't I'm not intending like to do this forever and leave this just for you know perpetuity you know what I mean like I will clean these uh, pans out after I have my fun with them and refill them with like the winter set or something so that's my intended use with the gouache um, I do have uh, I what I did is this is a little uh, perfume sampler uh, that these lids come off fairly easily. They pop right off. And you can refill that under your faucet or with a little pet. Um, and for me, <clears throat> it just sits perfectly right there. If I need to re-wet it, I really haven't had to. But yeah, it's been fine for me. Again, I wouldn't fill this with gouache and expect it to live there forever. 
Um, and that's also why I didn't dry the pans out fully because I know that when I want to go clean it out, it's going to be harder to clean out um, hard dried gouache from that pan rather than like, you know, softer gouache. So there's that. But I'll put that aside. Um, and then this is the sketchbook that I got and I keep and um, I really do like it. I got it in the haul. I really the last haul that I got when I uh, upgraded my plein air supplies and uh, it's it's this brand but it comes on Amazon under many other and it's 100% cotton. I love it. I accidentally started it <laughs> from the wrong side from the back side which is fine but um, I've made a few paintings in it. Um, it has, does not buckle. I'm super excited to get another one and buy another one. I would totally. Um, it's 300 GSM. I'm very, very happy with it. Both sides um, are really thick, hard, hard, hard cardboard. So it's like doesn't the edges don't get damaged. So I love this sketchbook. I'm really, really happy with it. It's got a cloth binding. Um, and the cover feels really good, uh, has, hasn't dirtied. I'm super, super happy with that. But it's not going uh, with me on vacation to New Mexico. I'll be going on vacation to New Mexico for just a weekend, and I'm super, super excited. Um, I spent much of my life in New Mexico, and so I'm excited to go back and see some family just for a weekend, and um, I'll be going there this weekend. And so I want to show you when I'll be taking with me. So instead of this sketchbook that I've got already. I'm going to be starting a new one. I'm just going to bring this visual journal with me. It's, I really like these. And I think that even though I'll be there just for a weekend, it's a five hour plane ride. And I think this will be the perfect size for me to do um, a journal, like a sketchbook journal of my vacation. I also recently discovered an artist, Claudia Nice. And uh, sadly, she passed away a couple of years ago, but she was an Oregon artist and she uh, wrote lots of books. And recently I picked up one, uh, one of the, her books, How to Keep a Sketchbook Journal, and I've been reading. And this is like a really uh, perfect time for me to keep a sketchbook journal of my trip to New Mexico. So I got myself a sketchbook for that. So that is one that I will be taking with me. And um, I wanted to make room in my uh, kit for some paints that I want to bring with me. These are a set of handmade paints from a, um, a maker on Etsy by the name of Addison and Sedgwick. And uh, Addison and Sedgwick is out of Boise, Idaho, and they do handmade paints uh, themed uh, from cities around the world. And interestingly enough, a couple of years ago, I bought one of the sets. She's got an Albuquerque set and I bought it because I have a connection to Albuquerque. So I want to make room in my kit to bring this with me. And what I'll do real quick is I'll swatch out these colors for you. I hope you all are still with me for that. Um, for this rather. So um, the colors that are in the Albuquerque set are these uh, here. This is, um, ooh, testing me now. Sandia, San Felipe, Trinity, Cibola, Pueblo, and Petroglyph. So I would like to swatch these out for you. They are absolutely beautiful. And then the other, oh, and, and she also included two. Uh, um, one is a phthalo blue, and this one is called Hudson um, from the New York City collection. And then these are uh, some others from some makers on Etsy that actually are no longer in business, sadly. But I do want to swatch these out, these Alba, this Albuquerque palette for you since I'm going. And they're so beautiful. Um, so this first one here, this one is called Pueblo. And um, so this maker on Etsy, she really did nail these colors. And uh, handmade watercolors are beautiful. I actually um, 
make my own handmade watercolors and I uh, buy other people's handmade watercolors. And I will very soon do a whole video on that. If that's something you'd like to see, please let me know down below because um, I, I have a lot of handmade watercolors um, that I've purchased and that I own. Um, and so I'd love to share those with you. So I've just swatched out uh, on my left here is Pueblo and then uh, Cibola and then is the green. And then this brown here is called Petroglyph. And then this other turquoise one over here. This one is called Trinity. There, um, if, has anyone seen Oppenheimer that's watching this video? So, you know, New Mexico uh, is where they tested the atomic bomb, where they developed it, where Los Alamos National Labs is. Anyhow, uh, this green one's called Trinity, and it's like this beautiful light turquoise. And then this red one here is called Sandia. And sandia is watermelon in Spanish. And the reason sandia is included is because Albuquerque, New Mexico is located at the base of the Sandia mountain range. And the mountain range is named sandia because at sunset, the mountain range turns the color of watermelons. And that's the color that the mountain range looks at sunset, it's beautiful. Um, you can Google it and see. And then this mixed color here, that's kind of a cream, that's called San Felipe. And uh, you can see it's mixed with a couple other colors. But these are the colors in the Albuquerque set that are absolutely lovely. Um, this one is Hudson. She included this as a freebie out of the New York City set. Um, it's named Hudson after Hudson River. <laughs> so beautiful. And then she also included a freebie of phthalo when I ordered this set. Um, and then these are just some shimmer colors I ordered off um, a seller on Etsy that's no longer in business, sadly. Uh, oh, and this is another green from um, Addison and Sedgwick. I don't remember the name. But it's a very pretty like pistachio green and it has a little bit of shimmer in it. I absolutely love it. So these are the paints that I'll be taking also with me to Albuquerque because how could I not, right? And um, I want to show you also the other things that are in my typical planar painting kit. I keep a set of uh, Albert Durer pencils. I love these. And um, I also keep uh, some sandpaper to, to sharpen rather than a sharpener. And also I think, I hope that'll be better on the airplane <laughs> than a, a sharpener, a metal sharpener. And I'm gonna put that back in because the other part of this, there's a pocket here. Well, there's pockets inside that I don't really use and a zipper on the outside that I don't really use. Um, but I do use this section here quite a bit, and I'll show you what I keep there. I suppose I could replace, get rid of these. I mean, like, I have these. We'll see how that works. But I keep, um, when I'm not sketching with Albrecht Durr's, I, I sketch with, um, a, like, a tricolored pencil. Oh, sorry, my nail polish. You know, shit happens. Sorry. <laughs> When I'm not uh, sketching with my Albrecht Durs, I um, I uh, sketch with one of these like tricolor pencils. I like these a lot. I buy them in bulk, and um, I also when I'm not doing like water water and just want a water brush, I have one of those, and I have I keep a, a pipette to refill it, and I have a detail brush. I also have a Uniball Eye pen, and I like this pen because it's waterproof, and I can use this over gouache and things like that. I like this a lot more than a Micron pen because, like, the felt tip of the Micron pen usually, like, gets clogged or whatever. 
So I like to, to use the Uniball Eye because it's waterproof. So I have that when I want to do some like pen and ink stuff. And uh, if I sign my work, I like to sign my work with um, the Uniball Signa Gold Pen. So I keep that in there. And then, I don't know if you saw recently about my video about mixing graphite in with your watercolors, but um, I you can use the like Hirotaki uh, fluid graphite, or you. I also have these like Lyra Mira water soluble graphite sticks. I mean, you can use, I don't know, anyway, like you can use any, I like water soluble graphite. And so I keep one of these sticks in there um, because I can just wet it um, and do like, I can do a whole monochromatic painting just with like, you know, or a watercolor sketch just, just with my water brush, right? And this little kind of stick of, of water soluble graphite. So I really like keeping that in there. And, um, but see like now it's wet and it will get on everything. So I like to keep this as a little sleeve. I ordered three of these for $10 off of Amazon. I think they came in like a 4B and 8B and a 6B, like, I don't know if you can see, but like the wet part of it, it does. So you will want something to protect it of, from getting on everything else probably. So I keep that in there. So that's like my general planar painting kit. And I've been really, really, really happy with it. Um, but for New Mexico, uh, if you're still with me, I'd like to show you what I'm going to bring um, and what I'm making room for in my bag. So I showed you these paints, the handmade paints, definitely going with me. The brushes, all that's going with me. But then I picked, so there's going to be a long plane ride both ways um, from Portland to New Mexico. And I really like playing with gouache as like an accent and just, yeah, I, I like gouache. So I picked out this really interesting, I think, limited palette and I want to share it with you. So, um, yeah, I've picked, I've put together these colors. I mean, what do you think? I can't wait. So I know it's not so typical, but, um, I hope it's not so typical anyway, but I'm really excited to see what I'll be able to do with these colors. So I'm going to like show you what I, why I picked these a little bit and kind of why I thought these were such an interesting combination. Um, so, you know, I'm not like expecting to use these as like a full mixing palette limited, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking like as a limited palette, fun kind of stuff mixes. I don't know. We'll see what I can do with it. Um, you know, I like to add gouache as accents. Um, and also just illustrations. So I'm not going to bring any white. I'm not going to bring any black. Well, I mean, I have the mixing white. So, and by the way, I do, I, I have successfully, I do successfully mix regular gouache and acryl gouache together. That's actually a tip that I got from a small art supply store in Portland when I was complaining about <laughs> my acryl gouache um, and the open time and the lack of it. And uh, the tip that I got was mix some regular gouache in with your acryl gouache and it will extend the open time. And it does. Open time is dry time, the time that it stays wet. So that's like um, a bonus tip for staying this deep into the video. So thank you all if you are this deep into the video. So let's see how these mix. Um, all right, so I've got the current red here. I should have put the 
the gouache in a palette rather, huh? And um, here's the cypress. So that cypress is like a, a see, it's almost like a, tur a, I don't know, like a deep turquoise and mixed with the current red. I was really unexpected. That was really unexpected for me. And I thought that's fun. And so is the, the cypress. I haven't used the cypress all that much because it's quite a dark, a deep color, right? So now this dandelion is interesting because it, it's, you'd think dandelion's yellow, but I mean, it's really green leaning. So uh, look at that. I thought I could get really nice greens. And so when I was playing with these colors, I was surprised at the palette that I was getting. I was like, what? And then I said to myself, self, can you get some orange with this green leaning yellow? And like, that's beautiful. I don't know what y'all think about, but um, I'm into this palette. So I wonder... I wonder what it is that I'm going to use on my weekend vacation and paint with. I have so many options. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited with this kit that I've put together. And I feel like bringing, um, oh, heavens, where did I stick it? Um, but bringing the, the visual, oh, here it is. Bringing the visual journal, I think this is, you know, a five, what, a five by seven? Yeah, five, no. It's like six by eight. It's six by eight. So this is six by eight. I mean, that's, that's some real estate, right? That's some real estate. <gasps> I should, I, I'm, I'm going to pack a washi. That's the only thing I'm missing is a washi because I could tape off some, some really neat things and yeah. Okay. I'll make, I'll make, I'll make a follow-up when I come back and let you know how this all went. I'm totally excited. Thank you so much for staying with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, until uh, next time, everybody take good, good, good care. Bye.